today. Giants, meet your makers, and Rockets are all battling to avoid automatic relegation. Today is going to be a very exciting game. There's going to be a lot of possibilities. If we win and Wolves lose, we have to play them in a tiebreaker. And if we beat them, we end up being the sixth seed and go to playoffs. We also have to make sure we don't lose, because if we lose and Rocket wins, we would have to play them for a tiebreaker and we might have to go to relegations. We'll have to bring our A game tomorrow versus Giants. If we win, we are secure the playoff spot. It's very important and we really want to go to playoff. It's in our hands. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the final day of the European League of Legends Spring Split regular season. We're coming to you live from our studios in Berlin, Germany, where it's a full house once again. The studio is packed up with fans getting ready to enter the studio as you see there, take their seats and enjoy this last day of regular season action. The Gambit fans making sure and maybe even uh, cheering on their fans to get third the Gambit. Then they are Pyrofisio giving a tour to Yamazuya and Skyen and their Giants. They are very, very focused knowing that they absolutely have their win versus the Copenhagen Wolves in the first game of the day and Young Buck <laughs> setting up and ready for that first game as well. They look pretty relaxed going into that very important game. I'm Efe Shogas of Florida here with our guest analyst for the week, James Stress O'Leary, and we are joined by the coaches for Fnatic and Elements, Daylor and Nif. Welcome guys and thank you very much for joining us. Hello. All right, well, just five games left to play the split, and today we'll decide the final spot at the playoffs, who will lock that one in, but also the seeding going into that tournament, and also, unfortunately, the team that will get auto-relegated. So first, let's look at where the teams stand before we delve into our matches. Of course, SK and Fnatic, they are first and second, and they have locked in that bye, and they go directly to the semifinals of the playoffs. Then Gambit is in fourth, with the potential to climb to third today, and the Copenhagen Wolves are in sixth. They will clinch that last playoff spot if they manage to pull out the win versus Giants. And at the bottom of the table, Giants and Meet Your Makers looking to get as far as possible away from that auto-relegation spot. And remember, only the teams that make it into the spring playoffs will earn championship points to qualify for the 2015 World Championships. Now with that in mind, let's see how the playoff bracket looks so far. There isn't that much filled in yet, but as you can see, SK Gaming and Fnatic with their automatic buy and uh, the other teams that will be competing for the seeding today, of which H2K Gaming will really, really want to hold on to that third spot in light of that. And as said, Daylor, congratulations, you guys have locked in that buy. Tell me a little bit about the reassurance this might be for you, knowing that you started the season with this team full of rookies almost, and then achieving this. Uh, thank you, the first. And at the beginning, when I joined Fnatic, I was, I was not expecting to be as good, like as good at, uh, from the beginning. So. Uh, it's a surprise, but at the same time, we've worked so hard that I feel that we really, uh, uh, we've worked for it, so we deserved it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the top of the tables, SK Gaming has a, most, a more impressive record than Fnatic. You guys have dropped a couple of games along the way, but to me, it seems maybe that Fnatic is more convincing when it comes to Summoner's Rift. What's your view on that top two and what you could do in the playoffs? Uh, my view is that uh, compared to SK, our highs are higher, but our lows are lower. So we're not as consistent. So if we are able to fix this problem, then uh, we should be on top of it. And also, I really feel that we should have won every game, even though this sounds like not realistic, but I feel that we've lost every game against ourselves instead of losing against the, the opponent. So if we just uh, fix our, consi our consistency issues, then I think we'll just be clearly on the top. That's a really interesting point, actually, about consistency, and I'd like to get Nif's take on this, because uh, you know that both teams, Fnatic and SK, is both a player and now as a coach. Uh, who do you feel is the most consistent team? Well, I think, as he said already, I think they're really highs like, and lows as before. I think it's typical with Fnatic, actually. A bit like we, just not as extreme. Um, I think they're working really hard for it, and yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, they worked hard for it and earned that spot in the playoffs. And by the way, if you want to get in on that playoff action, now is the time to grab your chance. Tickets are available for the EULCS Spring Finals in Madrid, Spain. We'll have the third place match there as well as the final, both best of fives. It will be held over two days in the Palacio Vista Alegre on April 18th and 19th. SK Gaming and Fnatic, they are there. And then the two more teams will be decided after the quarterfinals. All the info you need and the tickets are at lolesports.com. We will see you guys in Spain. We will see you in Spain with your team, Daylor. Yeah. That must be pretty cool feeling. Yeah, I'm extremely excited because uh, all my friends will be there. So it's going to be a blast.
Yeah, and who knows, you might even take the, the head prize home. Um, a couple of our playoff lock-ins are barely a day old, so let's recap some of yesterday's action, what we haven't touched on yet. And the big story for me with Nif here, of course, as well, is Elements. You guys pulled out a win yesterday, but it was difficult once again. Explain to me how, for instance, last week, you guys looked so good versus H2K, then terrible versus Gambit. And yesterday, it's I felt like I saw two sides of that Elements in one game. What do you attribute that to? Um, I think... We are doing an okay uh, part in pick and bands, but once we get uh, have a trouble adapting what the enemies do, then we get caught really off guard, and then we have troubles in game to adapt. Like I think the players are not that good at it, and I think that caught us really hard in the gamut game where they had a, just a siege comp and we had no answer to it. But it also caught us in the Cassadin pick, where, which j just gave us less wave clear, for example. So it's like a mix of. Like me, really new to the coaching position and still has to learn a lot, mm -hmm. but also to the team, like still having troubles in game. And I think the yesterday the game was kind of the same. They had a TF, which is not really something that's not new, like or normal rather. So we caught, got, got off guard a bit. Like we handled it really good in the early game where we ganked him and had a lot of pressure on him. But once the mid game arrived and we didn't deal with the split push he had, then we caught really hard and we had no answer to it. Yeah, it seems to me that you name a couple of different things in picks and bands, in decision making, in the game, in being confident in you yourself. Daylor, what do you think it is with elements that they haven't found their footing? Mm, I feel like they're, even though, okay, I, I think there are a couple of, obviously from outside because I don't know what's really happening, but uh, from my point of view, like just watching, just knowing the lineup, who the players are, I think that there will be like, personality issues or ego, ego issues and then watching the games I feel like their mid game shot calling is like not solid some games are like really weird what's happening in the, the map movements so from my point of view from the outside not knowing really what's happening inside I would say that these are the two main issues mm -hmm. Nif do you think with a little more time under your belt with these guys do you think that you'll be able to impose your voice a little more is that also one of the issues um, no actually they are listening to me and I think they have respect for me and they really like what I'm doing, but I think it's more of a problem within the team and I'm, I'm not sure what, what, what we will do and what will the future bring. So we will just have to wait and see how it goes. Yeah, and see how it goes in the first game of the day. Of course, if the Copenhagen Wolves manage to win, you guys are out of the playoffs. Let's turn our attention to the bottom of the tables. MYM and Giants stress fighting really hard to get out of that auto relegation zone and both lost our games yesterday. Yeah, it, it's looking a bit dire here for both teams at the bottom. One of them is going to still make it through into the promotion tournament, but one of them is going to be replaced uh, by what a lot of people would expect Origin, but we've still got to play out the Challenger series. Uh, our finals are coming up as well. But but it's a tough spot to be in at the bottom of the table, but that's not the only spot that's tough right now. Uh, everything in the, the standings between three and eight is still in flux. There's a potential uh, for three two-way tiebreakers at a maximum, depending on how our regular season games. So honestly, no team really, apart from the top two, can relax today. All right, yeah, indeed. Only three ties possible. It's a breeze today, guys. Um, if we'd had to ask you guys, obviously, Nif, you'll want to hope that Elements gets that last playoff spot. Daylor, do you think it's a done deal for Copenhagen Wolves? Um, not really. I mean, uh, Copenhagen Wolves ha has it in their hand to classify, but um, we've seen that they've lost games that they shouldn't, so it's it's not an easy, it's not going to be easy for them. No, and with the stress as well at this moment. Uh, we also want to hear what you guys have to say at home, and today we want to know who is your MVP of the spring split and why? And, uh, well, I'd love to get your take on that as well. Maybe Nif first, who has impressed you the most? <laughs> I think the crowd said it already. I think for me it's Huni. Like, he came into the this season without that much experience. People didn't know him, and then he just carries Fnatic really hard, and for me it's just the MVP of the spring split. Taylor? Okay, for me, it's Yellow Star. I, even though Hun is the fan favorite, like coming from like he's an, like a veteran in in the scene, and he had like a strong team of uh, veteran guys, and now he has a completely new team, and he made it work. And I work with him every day, and I've seen how much he's doing for the team. So. From the outside, maybe fans will say Huni, but from the inside, I, I would say uh, Yellow Star for sure. Yeah, and well deserved. Stress? For me, it's, uh, it's a player that hasn't really been MVP every single week, week but it's our two time MVP, Power of Evil. When he has been on form, he's looked unstoppable with the Unicorns of Love. So if he repeats that for a third week in a row, maybe he'll back himself uh, another MVP. But after yesterday's Cho'Gath, it's a little bit of a risky no, spot to be in. Not enough num 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 there. Uh, <laughs> remember to tweet your answers at all esports. Of course, include that hashtag LCS, and then we'll pull some 
some of your responses and get back to them later in the show. Now, looking forward to today's schedule, let's pull it up. We have five games in the regular scheduled games here today with the Copenhagen Wolves versus Giant Asset as our first game, and then Fnatic versus Elements, our second game of the day. And I think we should treat this um, as if, of course, we know that the first game is very impactful. Is that also the way you're looking at it, as an isolated game? Um, yeah, you have to look at it that way. But what, what's sad for us is that it's not our, in our hand anymore. So we, we have to hope that they lose. And that, that's a really horrible feeling, actually. All right. Daylor, how are you going into that match? I mean, it's all in the bag already for you guys, but I don't think you're the kind of team to just chill out. Uh, obviously, we are going to try to win. But uh, the truth is that we haven't prepared like in depth for this match because Basically, I went all in for the uh, for yesterday match. So of course we've got our strats, we've got our plan, but I haven't I haven't prepared like absolutely everything like uh, for the other games. All right, we'll see. Well, the first game we've got on our hands here is the Wolves versus Giants. Let's start by taking a look at the lineup for the Wolves: Youngbuck, Airwax, Soren, of course, Freeze, and Unlimited, and their coach Dentist. If they win versus Giants, they clinch that playoff spot. Yesterday, they were in a game versus the Rocket, an extreme thriller where they got ahead so much in the early game and kind of fumbled. Taylor, what is your opinion on um, the Copenhagen Wolves as a team and their struggles in the mid game? Um, I don't really, as I said before, I don't really know what every team does, but I feel by studying their games when uh, we were prepare, prepare, preparing against them, it's like their early game is against every opponent is different. So it feels like they have some kind of a script, like they've got a really solid plan going into a game and they don't follow a clear pattern. But then into the mid game, I think they don't have this plan, so they just have to make on the fly decisions. So I think that's the that's the issue they have. Mm -hmm. Nif, would you say those are similar issues that elements have, or do you guys know better how to adapt, but you make maybe individual mistakes in the mid game? No, I think it might be similar issues where you just have like someone like one shot caller, and then he has like some bad calls, and then influence the whole game. But also it can be that you have a r the wrong game plan, as you said already, that you might have a good early game strategy, which you can plan out for league. But once the mid game approaches, like it's really hard to prepare for it. Yeah. So what I think what they also want to do is get get into the late game, so have the mid game as short as possible, and then get to in the late game where they're really strong again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of surpass the mid game, and they can do that if they are super strong early. And they have some people in there, Soren, who really stepped up for me this season, and Freeze. There are a lot of question marks. How much will he be able to carry? It seems quite a lot. We talked a lot about Soren and Freeze yesterday, and I mean it showed in their performance yesterday. Both of them hitting double digits in kills and assists. And they had a lot of those kills pre-20, 25 minutes before they started struggling. And it's a little bit weird that a team that had such a lead in yesterday's game would slow down. And uh, like both Nif and Taylor have said, it's difficult to read what their mid-game plan was. I just wonder whether they, they kind of back off and try and do the Baron dance rather than looking at other easier objectives. We'll see what they tend to go for here versus Giants. Giants are on the red side for this one and their lineup, Whirlip, Frederick, Pepinero, Audrey, Rydal, and our coach, Lozark. And yes, Yesterday, and to be honest, also last week and a lot of the other weeks, it has been the Pepinero show. And uh, yeah, it must be hard for them knowing that their mid laner can always hold his own, but they don't really have anything else to work with. So how do you how do you see their chances in this one, Daylor? What should they put their money on? Of course, they should put the, mon the money on Pepinero, and the chances. I think they can pull the they can they can do it, they can win, but they have some strategical and tactical issues, like really big problems that. It's like they haven't evolved during the, the split like other teams have. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they rely heavily on, on their mid laner. Yeah. Um, Nif, you suffered, of course, that one loss versus Giants, which I'm sorry to remind you of. Um, but it does, I don't, do you think that is um, prowess and strategical prowess in the mid game getting the chance? Or is it not really calculator from them? They kind of just take what they can get and somehow pull out wins. Mm. I think their strategical play is still lacking. They haven't ado adopted as the other teams, which have been joining LCS as well in the past, and then actually crew as a team. I think that's a bit lacking. I mean, they're all really skilled players, right? They're all really high up in the solo queue ladder, for example. Mm -hmm. So really what they have to do is work on the teamwork. I think that's what's lacking right now. It's very telling, yesterday's game with uh, the Giants, that 100% kill participation out of Pepinero. He played the Twisted Fate. He played it all the time coming into expansion tournament. We said yesterday in the pregame, there wasn't that evolution. Delos just said exactly the same thing. Giants haven't evolved. 
and they've got to in their very last game, or otherwise they're about to be replaced, potentially. Yeah, and the Copenhagen Wolves, maybe they're feeling some stress and they can drop the ball versus Giants. Yeah. You hope so, of course. I do hope so. <laughs> but we will see. In any case, thank you guys very much for joining us, and uh, good luck in your matchup later today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, before we check in with the caster desk for picks and bands, we'll hear from the Giants' Whirlup on how the Copenhagen Wolves went from the back of his mind to the top of the tables. Copenhagen Wolves, in principio, Vaya, se decía, esto ya están por atrás, antes que mínimo y tal. Y de repente empezaron a ganar un par de partidos, empezaron a coger, a coger confianza. Y de repente los veías por la parte de arriba. Y en principio decías, ¿qué hace con Pena de Wolves ahí, no? Porque tú tienes la mente de que eran, eran de la parte baja. Pero la verdad es que últimamente sí, ya se ha hecho más, se ha hecho más normal que esté en la parte de arriba. Y creo que tiene un jugador bastante, que ha mejorado mucho sus jugadores a lo largo de Split. 